we acknowledge the first Australians as the traditional custodians of the continent, whose culture is the oldest living culture in human history. We pay our respects to elders, past, present and emerging, and we respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We extend our respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here today. They share the memories, traditions and hopes of the traditional ancestors with the new generation today and in the future. We would also like to thank them for looking after this land for thousands of years. Good, af good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to SciFest 2022. We're very excited to have all of you here today. We've got lots of people joining us um, from all across um, Australia, and it's just wonderful to have everyone here again um, celebrating science. So it's National Science Week, and we are able to do all of these amazing sessions this week for free um, due to funding by Inspiring uh, Australia New South Wales. So our first major show today is from... Um, Ben Newsom from Physics Education, um, and it's our Liquid Nitrogen show. So I will leave you with Ben um, and have a wonderful session today. Yes, absolutely, as I quickly type in my name. But yes, uh, nice to see you all. Uh, some of us actually hung out with me uh, when we did some uh, SciFest trivia, and we do have more of that trivia happening out throughout the time. And um, just go to Virtual Excursions Australia and, and you'll see the events of SciFest. But uh, I also wear a different hat, as does Karen. My hat that I'm wearing currently is physics education. We teach science to hundreds and hundreds of schools <laughs> every year in lots of different ways. And we've got a lot of you hanging out to watch me do some liquid nitrogen as a show. Now, here's the thing. I'm not going to make it just a show. I want to be able to answer your questions as best I can, uh, as well as um, I'm going to throw questions at you. So look down the bottom of your screen. There is a Q&A function. Don't worry about chat. We won't worry about chat so much, but the, I'll keep an eye out on the Q&A uh, window. And so I'm gonna throw some, some questions at you. Other times you can throw questions at me. Honestly, we do have a lot of people. We have 116 participants and over a thousand students, which means I may not be able to answer all of them <laughs> in the time we've got, uh, but we certainly will have a lot of fun. So. I believe we should do some liquid nitrogen because you're here for a liquid nitrogen show. So I'm going to move my camera with this so I can show you some things. So yes, I'm from a place called Physics and we're going to be using some liquid nitrogen and it's really cold. So I need glasses because my eyes are wet. This stuff is really, really, really cold. So I'm just going to put my glasses on and one of the questions that comes up a lot is what about your gloves? What, what, what type of gloves will you wear and should you wear them? I'm going to do some experiments and actually go through why I don't wear gloves. Not because I'm crazy, of course I actually want to look after myself, but I will go through that, but I definitely need glasses the whole time. Now, it's cold. To give you an idea that it is cold, if I hold this up here, you can kind of see there's some fog dropping on down a little bit. You especially see it when, ugh, I pour it out into my container here, my thermos. Yeah, it's cold. Now, if I didn't tell you it was cold, you'd be able to tell because the fog is going down. If it was hot, the fog would go up, right? Think of a kettle. If a kettle is boiling, you see steam rise over the kettle. And, uh, oh, oh, great question already. I've had a question there from Sydney Children's Hospital here. G'day, nice to see you. The question that just come up, right? Why is liquid nitrogen so cold? Well, it's a great question. Turns out that different chemicals will be liquid at different temperatures. This needs to be minus 196 degrees Celsius for this to be a liquid. Any more heat than that, well, the molecules that make up that liquid separate outwards and they become a gas. In fact, if I blow into this, you can tell it's cold. It's so cold that water in my air turns to a cloud as I blow into it. If you blow from where you are, you'll see most likely not much happen around your mouth because most likely where you are, it's not cold enough for water in your breath to turn to a cloud. 
whereas here, it definitely condenses. It's minus 196 degrees Celsius in that thing. Now, what we're going to do is let's give you a chance to see it. So yes, I've got some stuff. I'm definitely got a lot of things to show you. Let's go in really close on my milkshake cup. As I pour it in, look down the bottom. If you look carefully, you'll see it bubbling and sizzling away. Now uh, I'm gonna go really close to it so you can kind of see. So we go in and I'm gonna pour it in. It goes a little bit blurry when, it, when we first go in because the poor old camera can't sort itself out. It goes, oh, it's too hard. I can't focus on it, it's too shiny. So I'm gonna fix it. Fix it out. I'm going to go out a little bit because it was too hard for it to work it out. Come on, sort yourself out. Autofocus camera is Karen. It's fighting me. <laughs> it's definitely fighting me. I'm going to have to go outwards a bit today. There we go. That's slightly better. There we go. I have to go with that. There we go. That's better. In we go. Now ignore the fog. I'm going to get tip this to one side. If you look to the side, you'll see it bubbling away. Boiling away rapidly. Now I've had a great question come from Patrick from LSPS. Is, uh, is ice or liquid nitrogen colder? Well, ice could get down to this temperature, but ice forms at zero degrees Celsius. If you think of your ice in your freezer, that is minus 18 degrees Celsius. If you think of Antarctica, the coldest temperature in, in Antarctica, the South Pole in Lake Vostok, this Russian station where they do some science, they once recorded minus 89.4 degrees Celsius. That's pretty cold. This is minus 196. This is very cold. But the thing is, it's doing a change that you may not expect. If I uh, put this over here, let's get my rubber glove. Let's add this on. Now, what's actually making a bubble is that the cup was much hotter than the boiling point of the liquid nitrogen. And boiling just means changing. As you can see here, oh, there's the one stuck there. Whoop. <laughs> this is changing from a liquid to a gas. So great question. So that's why it sizzles, it sizzles at the bottom from Heathcote Eats Public. It does this because it needs to separate out because the bottom of the cup was way hotter than the boiling point of that liquid. I mean, the, these are great questions, by the way. I love how there are any questions that we're getting all through all this. Can it give me frostbite if it sits on my hand? Yes, 100%. Can liquid nitrogen turn to a solid? Yes, but much colder than minus 196 degrees. Most of this, most of the time, as much as we're gonna see ice form, which will be from the water in the air, and it's certainly ice forming, whoop. <laughs> there is, there's lots of ice forming here, uh, but, most of the time, it's forming a gas. It's boiling away. Now, let's do some, uh, some more with this. What you just saw is the real danger of liquid nitrogen. I understand that it's cold. In fact, I can feel it. That there is cold. Down there, it's going to feel colder. But the thing is, just before today, before this session, I had a coffee. Now, think about what would happen with your coffee or a tea, or a hot Milo, or a hot chocolate. If you spill your hot chocolate on your hand, well, you'd burn, right? This isn't hot water. Hot water, if it sits on your hand, will burn you. Liquid nitrogen does something a little bit different. You saw it pop on off. Let's show you what would happen if it touches something rough. Now, what we'll do is I'm gonna make my camera look down at the floor. Of all things, we're gonna look at the floor. Down we go. Right, why am I doing that? Well, I'm gonna come around my table and here I've got my carpet. The carpet is rough. If I pour liquid nitrogen on there, it gets trapped. It sits down low. We'll do it again. It gets trapped and doesn't slide. Of course, it's rough. The carpet fibers trap the liquid nitrogen. But what has this got to do with my hands? Well, I'm gonna bring the camera, camera back off the floor because that's not the greatest thing to watch, let's be honest. Let's change my view to something that's smooth like my hands and we'll explain why I'm not wearing gloves. So I'm going to go to a different camera and we're gonna look over here at a baking tray. Now the baking tray is smooth, just like my hands. If I add liquid nitrogen to here, 
Watch what happens. Ignore the fog. In fact, I'm going to blow the fog out of the way. Look at it. It slides really easily. Really, really easily. It's sliding incredibly quickly because the metal is way hotter than the boiling point of liquid nitrogen, which is minus 196 degrees. This is way hotter. This metal is making it boil so fast. In fact, so fast that gas is being trapped under the liquid droplets and it slides on a pocket of gas and it slides really easily, almost like a little hovercraft. So again, you might be wondering, what's this got to do with my hand? Well, it's got a lot to do with my hand. Let's do a really quick drawing. I'm gonna move my camera over here to my whiteboard. Now, if I have my hand, so there's my hand, there, 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 there. One hand. If I got my coffee and I dropped it on my hand there, it would sit on my hand and all that heat would go into my hand and then I'd burn, yeah? That would be bad. We don't want to put boiling water on ourselves. It transfers heat easily. But my hand is much, much, much hotter than the boiling point of liquid nitrogen, which is minus 196 degrees Celsius. It won't just sit on my hand like water. Liquid nitrogen, when it briefly touches my hand, rises up off my hand, cause it boils so fast, and gas gets trapped under it and it slides off my hand. So what's that got to do with the gloves? Well, I know if it comes off my hand, no big deal. It's not really gonna be an issue. If I'm wearing gloves though, what if the liquid nitrogen gets in my glove? If it gets in my glove, I'm going to burn because it's prepped against, you know, it's trapped against my skin. That would be a problem. I don't want that to happen. Now, of course, I could wear long sleeves. I could cover the end of my glove with long sleeves and it can't go in my glove anymore, right? But that brings another problem. I'm then holding liquid nitrogen with these big fingers and I could drop it on me, which makes it dangerous as well. So this actually makes it not as safe as you might expect. We don't, I'm not worried about the cold, though I have to respect it, but that's no different to respecting hot water. The real danger is that it, it's explosive. So we're gonna show you. So I'm gonna bring my thing over this way. It's actually only half the answer of why it's dangerous too, by the way. So by the way, you can see if I go in nice and close, ooh, I've fixed my view up so it's a bit better. Look at that. You look here, oh, it still wants, hey, come on autofocus, it really does not wanna do that one. There we go. Look at this, there's lots and lots and lots of ice now. Ooh, heaps. Now, what if we get ourselves a can? With my can, I'm going to put in our minus 196 degree liquid nitrogen, which gets over 600 times bigger when it boils. Let's put it into my can. I'm gonna get a little bit more, of course I can. If I put the lid on, to my can, I mean, think about it. What do you think is going to happen? Well, let's find out. All right, ah, ready, one, two, three, clicking on. Whoa, it's quick, isn't it? Pop. In fact, let's go over here. Have a look at this container. This container is called a dewer and the lid is completely loose. It's totally loose. If it was clipped on tight, it would explode. Absolutely, it would, which would be bad. In fact, if I go over here, have a look if I go up close. Ugh, see that just there? That is a pressure release valve that lets out the gas safely if in case there was a problem with my dewer, with my container. It is explosive, very much so. So what I'm thinking is let's let's explode something. So let's go over here and I'll go back through some of the questions that we're getting because I know we're getting a lot. I'll, I'll go have a look real soon. But uh, just for now, 
I've got a very cold cup. And you see the cold gas dropping on down. If I add water to this, the water will transfer heat into the ice that's frozen on the outside. And that poor little snowman melts away. So the water transfers heat, yeah? So what's that got to do with what we're gonna do? Let's explode something using our liquid nitrogen. I've got my little Coke bottle and I'm gonna pour in minus 196 degree liquid nitrogen. In we go. And another one. A little bit more. All right. So they're in there bubbling away. Let's get a balloon and add it. Up it goes. But it's slow. Let's help it out. Now, by the way, this isn't for show. This gets loud. All right. In fact, it'd be much louder than what you're experiencing from where you're sitting because your TV volume or your monitor volume is only up to a certain volume. Whereas here, the sound is, well, it's, it's going to be coming from this. Let's show you what happens when I add this into here. It's going to add a lot of heat into it. and It's going to boil really, really fast. All right, let's go. Ready? One, two, three, going in. Off we go. And yes, it starts boiling really fast and really fast and really fast. It really, oh wow, it's really going. Whoa! <laughs> All right. Really well. Wow, it's explosive. Very much so. And look what's happened to my, uh, <laughs> my balloon here. Let's go in close so you can see it. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so you can see it's been shredded. In fact, there's bits of balloon all over my floor. This was much louder than normal because the gas was expanding in equal directions in all different ways, in all directions at the same rate. And the whole thing exploded at once. It released energy all at once and the whole thing went bang. So it's explosive. Yes, it's cold, but because it gets over 600 times bigger as it boils, it's explosive. That actually introduces another issue. What you don't see on camera, but I can see, is I have a window over there and it's open. I also have an air conditioner there. It's letting in breathable air. Because the gas that keeps you alive, oxygen, it's found in air, but it's not found in, well, the pure nitrogen. Um, we don't wanna have breathable air pushed away by the nitrogen. In fact, sadly, the deaths from liquid nitrogen have come from air being pushed away by it. So we need to be able to breathe. Now, I'm gonna really briefly pause because I know there's been lots and lots of questions and some of these questions will be answered as I do some of these experiments. I'm just gonna sort of, sort of scroll on a little bit. Uh, would my hand freeze? No, unless I kept it in there for a long time. Uh, what would happen to put liquid nitrogen into fire? Well, it depends on how much nitrogen I put into the fire. If there's a lot that covered the fire and got rid of the oxygen, that would um, put the fire out. But if it didn't do that, it'd be an issue. All right. So lots of, like, lots of comments, lovely. <laughs> A lot of people enjoying it. Excellent. Okay. So, all right. So why didn't the balloon freeze? Great question from Lismore South Public School. Great question. All right. So the answer for that was the liquid nitrogen wasn't touching the balloon. It was the gas going up into it. Well, let's put liquid nitrogen over a balloon and see what happens then. All right, so the way we're going to do this is I've got my tray. That's the same tray we looked at before. And let's get our balloon. Let's tie it up and pour liquid nitrogen over our balloon. Now, have a think about what you think it might do. Inside there, there's air. The air is bouncing up and down and side to side and back and forth. It's holding the balloon outwards. It's, it's, it's what it's doing. Let's cool it down to extremely cold temperatures to minus 196 degrees Celsius. Let's go close and see what happens. Here we go. We're going nice and close. You can see 
I'm going to get my tongs and let's pour our very cold liquid nitrogen over it. Over we go. Ah, it gets smaller. The air contracts. When you cool down air, it gets smaller. Now what we're going to do is let's warm it up again. I'm going to get up to my face and let's blow on it. And then we're back to normal again. So it works because inside the air, inside that balloon, there's air bouncing around like it's in a jumping castle. It's got energy. It's got pressure. It's holding the balloon outwards, but only while it's warm. If we cool it down, the molecules inside slow down. They have less energy, which means they have less pressure, less force. And so the air around here squishes it. And that's why it worked. So it definitely did, did uh, get shredded in other ways. Now I'm trying to make sure that we answer questions as we go along too. So uh, we had a good question there. How do you get liquid nitrogen? Well, liquid nitrogen is, doesn't come from a very hard substance in a lot of ways. Everyone breathe in and breathe out. You just breathe in mainly nitrogen not oxygen you brought into your body mainly nitrogen in fact if we do a quick drawing for now yes i do quick drawings we'll rub this out you breathe in if imagine i've had a box with all the air in the world most of the air that you breathe has 78 percent nitrogen i put a little two there because the nitrogen sort of hangs out together two little atoms joined together this is 21% oxygen. Now, quick mathematics. 21 plus 78 is 99. 99% of your air is nitrogen and oxygen. And the way they actually make liquid nitrogen is they cool down air and different chemicals become liquid at different temperatures. The other 1% of all the air in the world is all the other hundreds of gases. There's hundreds of them, like hydrogen and helium and xenon and sulfur dioxide and all this stuff. But they only add up to 1%. But when you get to all of air and you start cooling it down and pressing on it, different liquids turn up from different gases that's in your air. All right, so we'll go quickly to another question, then we'll move on with more experiments as well. But it's nice to always answer some questions as we go along. All right. Now, the water does turn to ice. That's actually an interesting question. In fact, so we had a question about, you know, how's, how does the water get so cold without turning to ice? It actually does. Look at this. Look at me on the ice here. That's all around the outside of my bottle. And it is cold, so much so it sticks to my hands. It is cold. All right. Have I ever failed an experiment? Well, if you're not doing science, eventually, you know, if, if you do uh, science for long enough, something's going to not work. But there's actually, a, I want to be careful with my words. I'm not sure there is such a thing as a failed experiment. All it is is a result. Sometimes things produce what you expect. Sometimes they produce what you don't expect. There's still a result. So it's not really a failure. It's just a discovery of more information. All right. Uh, I think, yeah, lots of uh, uh, liquid nitrogen. How does it get made? Oh, Carl, a public like me blowing up the balloon. <laughs> awesome. Excellent. Yes, I do too. Okay, how about we use this for good? Because I had a couple of questions about making, like, could I make like explosions that are dangerous? And yeah, I suppose, but I don't want to lose my thumbs. We do actually, when we visit schools, we do a, a, a full blown explosion. And I actually was doing it this morning at Ingleburn High School. But I can't in this room. It's too small. Seriously, it just explodes too much. But let's do something else. Let's use this power for good rather than power for bad. Probably should, right? It is science week. Science is all about trying to do things that works well for now world. In this case, I'm going to use my water. And I've got a bottle. And I've got my liquid nitrogen here. Ooh. Oh, there we go. I'm going to pour this in to here. And just off camera, I just realized I had, I've got to get a little part out of my little kit. I realized I didn't put it out. But that's okay, because my little kit's just sitting over there. So I'm going to go grab my little kit. 
because I've got a lid which has little tubes that let the gas out safely. So I'm going to go in there, I'm going to grab said lid. It is... Where's my lid? There it is. No, it's not. There it is. Found it. There it is. <laughs> I was wondering where it was. All right. Dear yeah, idea. You can tell it's science week with lots of shows and things. Your brain starts to get a little bit fuzzy. But I have a lid with tubes coming out of it. It lets the gas out safely. If it did not have tubes, it would explode, which is what I don't want it to do because I like my thumbs. So I've got my tubes facing two different directions. You can kind of see it, yeah? Now, water is slippery and it also transfers heat into this, so it boils rapidly. Let's put the bottle with the liquid nitrogen into our cup. Here we go. And off we go. Go. Whoa. That's really quickly. What we've actually made is a motor. That motor was working with gas putting one way and gas putting the other way and setting the bottle to go round and round and round and round. It's got a lot of power and we were able to direct that thrust to where I wanted it to go. And look, there's a lot of ice. Again, what do you think might happen if I took the lid off? What do you expect? What do you think would happen? All right, tell you what, I'm going to go to the Q&A because I've kind of asked you a question. So you're going to be answering, lots of you are going to be answering questions, which means it's going to be hard to read them all, but I will try. Oh, I've got to end the now you're answering really fast. It will explode. Okay. Interesting. Well, let's find out. Okay, let's get our liquid nitrogen inside. In fact, this might help you guess what's going to happen. I'll change my view. Just a slight change. Ah, we had an answer from Gus and Mateo. have said it will fly out of the cup. Fair enough. Let's find out. Oh, why have I got my... Why do I have the tubes facing two different directions? It was important. I had to produce a torque, a force on it, that would allow it to spin. In a lot of ways, it's like a sprinkler. I had a question here, that's interesting. If I put liquid nitrogen down the drain, what would happen? The water in the drain would freeze at the top. It would likely crack the pipes of the drain and that would be bad. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Okay, let's uh, put it in and let's see what happens. Up we go. Massive geyser. Huge geyser. Yeah, the nitrogen comes out. Now I had a question there as well, which was what would happen if I drank liquid nitrogen? Well, think about what happened with the glove. The glove expanded and then popped off. Well, if I drank it, it would go down my esophagus into the left-hand side, which is where your stomach is. It would start freezing some parts of the stomach, but the other parts would start expanding it would tear the stomach and that's not good. Hey, look what's happened here. If I hold the top here, it's stuck. Water is weird. Water actually gets larger when you freeze it, whereas most chemicals get smaller when you cool them down. Now, we saw that happen with our balloon. The balloon got smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller as I cooled it down. And then when I warmed it up, it got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Water is strange. It's gotten bigger so much so that it's trapped in there. Now, how about we do an experiment, which is rather, well, it, it, it's used all over Australia and around the world, uh, usually in grade eight or grade seven, depending on your high school. It's a very common experiment. I'm going to go in close so you can see what I'm dealing with. So here we go. Wait, it did not move. We'll try it again. Here we go. Thank you. See this? This is a ball and ring apparatus. Now the ball and ring is exactly what it sounds like, a ball and a ring. Only the ball and ring are made out of metal. If I put the ball into the rink, it fits. It only just fits though. It's pretty tight. Now in high school, what you do is you put your ball into fire. And as it heats up, 
the metal gets bigger and then you can't fit it into the ring. Of course, metals expand as you heat them up. Well, I haven't got fire. I'm not doing a fire show right now. But what I can do is cool down the ring. So we'll do that. Let's pour in, put this into here. And I actually have to, usually at this point, and it yet again is, let's pour in some liquid nitrogen because I want to get it nice and cold. So I'm just going to go off camera for a little bit and I'll come back. Uh, there we go. And pour in our nitrogen. And we'll keep on going. There uh, we go. In we go. If you're wondering what it feels like, it's like holding a big bucket of water in a lot of ways. So a lot of chemicals are clear, including nitrogen when it's when it's a, a liquid. I mean, most chemicals are clear. This is actually why you have to label your bottles in a laboratory of the stuff that you're using. Labeling is important in a science lab. All right, so that's nice and cold. Done. Let's take it out and see, did the ring get smaller or not? Ugh, get my lid out of the way. Let's find out. Well, an easy way to find out, apart from just looking at it, because it looks are kind of the same, right? Let's, ah, <laughs> it ain't going through. It has gotten smaller. If I get some water though, which I have, I've got some water here, I'll add this into my water. Am I heating it up or cooling it down? Well, if you think about it, that's just water that's a liquid. It's like it can flow, which means it's definitely warmer than zero degrees Celsius. That metal was lower than zero degrees, which means it has to have been warmed up. And we can prove it because it should have changed in size. So I'm going to tap away the ice Get rid of that stuff. Get rid of this stuff. There we go. A bit of ice in the way, because hey, the metal was cold, it's gonna freeze around it. Did it get bigger or smaller? Yes. It got larger. When you heat up metals, they get bigger. So you might be wondering, why would I care? Like, why is this important? Well, if you think about materials that make up your home or your school or wherever, well, the liquid night, oh, my brain's stuck on liquid nitrogen. The different materials in your house will expand or contract at different speeds during the day or during the night. So during the day, your house expands slightly and during the night, your house sort of gets smaller. And if there aren't expansion joints to allow for the movement of the materials getting bigger or smaller, you can crack your house. And you might even hear creaking at night and in a wooden house as it slowly settles as it cools down. Definitely the case. Now, um, I am conscious that we only have a shorter time today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a little bit of play because we can. <laughs> Before I have a play, I wanna make sure I'm answering questions as we go along. Uh, where do I store it? In uh, Jua. What happens if I mix the coffee and liquid nitrogen? <laughs> We're gonna see something very much like that very soon. What if happens if I put liquid nitrogen on paper? Less about what you might expect. But how about we, uh, because actually paper has a lot of cellulose in it and it keeps it, it's, it's pretty hard to change much, but I do have a tennis ball. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my view again to a overhead view. There we go. And there is my tennis ball. Let's pour our liquid nitrogen over my tennis ball. Cools right down. Now it did shrink slightly. I don't know if you saw this, but it did get slightly smaller because in a lot of ways, your tennis ball is like a balloon. So I'm just gonna make sure it's all kind of cooled down quite nicely. There we go. Now I've done that. Oh, we're going off camera. There we go. I have a device that we can use to investigate what that tennis ball is like. This is my device I will use. Yeah, we're going to use a hammer. Let's change my view back to my face. Hey, from here, I'm going to get the tennis ball. There it is. And let's go down to the floor. Whoa. And let's go around the, to the front of my desk with my tennis ball and my hammer. 
could hear that. Wow. Crunched. Absolutely crunched. I mean, look at it. Now, it's not so cold, but the yellow felt protects my hands, but it is completely broken. It is shattered. Crunched. So rubber becomes very brittle when you cool it down to minus 196 degrees Celsius. All right, let's bring this around again. I'll make you, I'll stop you having to look at the floor very soon. I've just got to get to my remote. There we go. Well, I pressed the wrong button. I want that one. Now, let's just have a bit of fun with this. Of course, we got liquid nitrogen and then it's science week. It's National Science Week. So let's have a bit of fun with it. So I'm going to move my tray out of the way. Ah. And I've got myself a kettle. Now, kettles, this is like those kettles that you put on a gas stove and you heat up the water and it boils. And there's a little valve here and the valve vibrates as gas comes out of it. And it tells you when you're boiling your liquid inside. Now, I'm not going to boil water. I have liquid nitrogen to boil instead. I'm going to take the lid off. I'm going to pour in my minus 196 degree liquid nitrogen. There we go. Now, when I put my lid on, if I do it really carefully, I can get like fog rings to shoot out, which are kind of fun. Okay, so here we go. Oh, nearly. Oh, I'm struggling a little bit. Can I get it to go? There's one. It went. I saw it. It did do it. There's another one. And another one. This is kind of fun. But there's more to it than that. If I put the lid on, it's going to vibrate, right? Of course, there's, there's gas coming out, because remember, it is boiling. Now, what we're going to do is, a bit like the question that came up with what happens if you put it on the it, liquid nitrogen on coffee. Well, I'm not going to use coffee, but I do have some hot water. So I'm going to pour my hot water in, which will help rapidly boil my liquid nitrogen. So I'm going to put this stuff out of the way a little bit, put this down, and in we go. Really boiled. Okay. You had some annoying sound. There we go. It is, it's got ice all over it. Look, if we go in close, you can see there's ice all over my kettle, but it was still boiling. Boiling doesn't mean hot and boiling doesn't mean cold. It's just a change in state from a liquid to a gas. Different chemicals do it at different temperatures. Okay, let's have some more fun with it. What if, oh, that was noisy, wasn't it? What if we pour liquid nitrogen into the hot water? What do you think might happen? There's my nitrogen. Let's find out. Ah, the steam above the hot water turns to a cloud and it drops down. Looks very good for Halloween, right? Now, two things could occur. I've just poured liquid nitrogen into hot water. Perhaps the hot water might freeze. Alternatively, the liquid nitrogen will boil away, leaving hot water behind. I wonder what you think is going to happen. I'm going to leave this down just a little bit. What do you think might happen? I'm going to see what your answers are. Keep an eye out. Oh, interesting. So the question was, uh, if a big amount of liquid nitrogen is poured on the Eiffel Tower, what would happen? It would contract. It would get slightly smaller. No, we're not pouring on a PlayStation 5. That will wreck it. No, if I blew on the tennis ball, it would not come back. Because I cracked the tennis ball, it was, it was shattered. All right. Why does it make noise when it's boiled? Because there's a little valve that vibrates. It will evaporate. Hey, we had an answer for it. And guess what? That person who said it will evaporate, you're correct. It is. Look, there's steam starting to rise. Now, I'm going to catch the chat because there's two different windows happening. No. Is a cloud made of liquid nitrogen? Great question. Uh, no, it's, a cloud is made out of water, dust, and air. There's water bound around the dust. 
and you, as long as you've got um, a dew point where water can form little droplets around dust in a cloud, you've got yourself a cloud. All right, now look here, the, the steam started to come up, which means it did not freeze the water. It didn't, it's still hot in there. In fact, it really is, I can feel it, it's hot. It's actually quite warm. It's really hard to cool down boiling water, which brings up the answer to the question I had about 20 minutes ago. Someone asked, what about liquid nitrogen on lava? Well, honestly, the lava would boil away the liquid nitrogen and it'd still be pretty hot behind. I mean, lava is like two and a half thousand degrees Celsius. Like it's really hot. And that was not that hot compared to it. All right, well, let's do a little bit more. And I am acutely aware that we're nearly finished because we do have schools here and some schools need to run on to their next thing. So let's make a mess. Uh, actually, before I do a mess, what if I turn my lights off? Ah, I've got myself a laser. Let's put the liquid nitrogen through a vapor cloud. I'm going to have this vapor cloud going down. And look, it's a purple laser. So lasers are used to look at clouds. And what you're seeing is a laser bouncing off the fog. It's a purple laser, but like, I suppose it's like a lightsaber. That would make me Samuel L. Jackson because it's purple. It doesn't show up as well, the purple on, on the webcam, I noticed, but it is a very much a purple laser. All right. So you can study clouds with lasers. Now let's do some bit more. Ugh. Let's make, I promised a mess, so we're going to make a mess. So the question, if I put the hot water on the nitrogen, same thing, you get a big cloud. You get a big cloud come out. A bit like what I did with the, with the, um, with, with that bowl there. All right, so I've got my water. Let's get my detergent, pour it on in, and give it a swish. Around we go. We're effectively making bubble mix. So we're gonna pour in our liquid nitrogen, and up it goes, <laughs> everywhere. <coughs> everywhere, it's all over the place. And actually, if you look, there is fog in the bubbles. Totally. And I feel like it's going for my next trick. It's not going to be the next trick. It's going to be a scientific investigation. Let's freeze bubbles. Of course we can. Now, by the way, that erupted because liquid nitrogen boiled rapidly and the gas got trapped in the, in the detergent and you got yourself bubbles. Well, let's um, now do the same experiment again. But this time, reach in there and get the frozen bubbles out. So I'm going to go to a lower view because you have more of a chance to see it. So we'll do that. Here we go. We're pouring our liquid nitrogen. It's going to bubble up away just like it did before. Up it goes. And I want to get the frozen bubbles from inside there. There they are. Found them. Frozen bubbles. Scientists study frozen bubbles too, and it looks at the air inside frozen, well, glaciers, trapped air from a long time ago, and you compare it to now, and you can see that the climate is changing, because you can see the gas is changing in the air from a long time ago, because it's trapped inside the bubbles that's inside glaciers, which is kind of amazing when you think about it. Hey, guess what? I'd love to hang out a little bit more, but... You have other stuff to get onto. Now, by the way, there are about 200 free experiments. There are, there's a heap on our, on the physics website. And I also want to encourage everyone who's involved to join uh, more of the Virtual Excursions Australia programs that are coming up. So I'm going to put a link in here for the physics stuff. And actually, Karen just said hi. Hey, Karen. Excellent. Thank you so much, Ben. That is always an amazing show. And I especially love the frozen bubbles. Who doesn't love bubbles? Who doesn't love liquid nitrogen? So it's a great mix. Um, if you didn't have a chance to get that link down, I will be sharing it um, to you when we send the recording. 
So yeah, we'll be sharing absolutely. the recording with a link to all of those amazing experiments that you can do from physics education as well. So a big round of applause to Ben. Thank you so much for such an amazing show. Um, as always, it's wonderful. And what a great way to start off SciFest 2022. Um, and we'll also share the link to those other sessions that you can um, um, book into as well. We've got another 13 sessions to go across the week for National Science Week. So thank you so much for joining us, everyone, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. All the best. Bye.